What's up, King of Kings? Top five coming to you again. I know you eagerly anticipate the dropping of the new top five every Wednesday. Like always, my co-host, Peter Bay. How you doing, man? I always feel like somebody's watching me. I'm doing right. ready, ready to get cartoony. Cute, creepy mascot, maybe tipping off our topic today. Lisa Hickey is our special guest. Lisa, thanks for joining us. How you doing? Thanks for having me. I am so excited. <laughs> All right. Love the woodland background you've got behind yeah. you. As Peter teased before, our topic today is top five animated movies. As always, we don't know each other's lists before we start. We will go in reverse order. On will mention movie we hate, and then five, four, three, two, one. Peter and Lisa will battle back and forth. I'll share my list in summary at the end. So Lisa, how did you approach this topic? Was it nostalgia? Was it fun? Was it storyline? How'd you approach it? So there is nostalgia factor for sure. And there is a factor of, you know, how funny is it? You know, is it going to keep my attention? But I think the most important thing to me was storyline for okay. sure. Cards on the table. Mr. B, how'd you approach it? Yeah, mine is like 100% nostalgia. Uh, I mean, just what, I mean, what, what, what did I have uh, bed sheets of when I was a kid? That's what made my top five. Not or now, still, or now. We're not judging your bed sheets now if you've got minions on your bed sheets. I don't know, man. That's fine. Uh, all right. No further delay. Lisa, take us into an honorable mention or movie you hate or both. Movie I hate. Oh, or why was Coraline made? It is awful. It makes my skin crawl. I will never watch that movie again, ever. What? Short and harsh. I've never even heard of that movie. Uh, so maybe something right. to check out or avoid, like Lisa said. Yeah, it's one of those creepy little like Tim Burton flicks. Gotcha. Oh. Okay. Lisa, any uh, honorable mentions you want to toss out? You know, honorable mention, I have to throw in uh, Space Jam, for sure. It's a good one. It's classic. What's not to love? Is this Last Dance related, uh, Bulls documentary, or no, you liked it before that documentary came out? Liked it before. All right. I love it. I believe I can fly. Our <laughs> Kelly before we knew he was, yeah, anyway. Mr. B, honorable mention of a movie you want to hate on. Yeah, first off, I want to name one of the worst movies of all time. This is weird because I'm a music major. I have a, I have a music ed degree. And uh, so this movie, my least favorite animated movie of all time, Fantasia. Ugh. Fantasia, it's like where they took all this classical music and there was like no storyline and it was it was like I don't know who that ma movie was made for, not for kids. And so it scarred me. I'm surprised I still became a music teacher after seeing Fantasia, the worst. Oh, wow, all right, all right. F flip it around. Honorable mention, you got anything? Yeah, I've, I actually have two honorable mentions. These are both, I love these movies. They weren't quite good enough to make my top five, but two honorable mentions. One, I love some good potty humor. And no movie did it better than Captain Underpants, Tra La La. Very good stuff. Well done. And then the other one, uh, this is a, another very clever movie. It's my favorite take on Little Red Riding Hood. It's called Hoodwinked. Hoodwinked. Check it out. Great flick. Honorable mentions. Interesting. Another one I've never heard of. Uh, forgot to mention before, viewers, you play a huge part in this. So especially top fives, you let us know where we got it right and where we got it wrong like you always do. And we want to hear your top fives. Uh, so without further ado, Lisa, on to your number five movie. All right. My number five is Lion King one and a half. Not one, not two, one and a half. It is great. Yes, exactly, Peter. One and a half. It follows uh, Timon and Pumbaa and their story, and it's just so good. Who doesn't love Timon and Pumbaa? All right. I, I was with you until you added the half. I've never even heard of Lion King one and a half. This is like three or four movies I've never heard of. I'm a failure as a host. Mr. B, on to you. Akuna Matata, yeah. Uh, number five, this is this is a movie that came out when I was a kid. I, um, I love the adventure of it. It is Aladdin. Aladdin, uh, just a super fun movie. Uh, Abu was a great character. And, of course, you had the diamond in the rough, which I enjoyed that as well. You okay in there, man? We need to come lay some hands and pray on you and cast out some demons or something? What's up with that? I'll take prayer whenever. 
Okay. All right. All my right. hands from a distance. That's true. Over Zoom, it's still affected. Spirits everywhere. Uh, Lisa, who, what, what's your number four movie? Number four, the classic Incredibles. All right. You know, mom has to go save the dad for a change, but then they have to work together as a family to really accomplish their goals. It's just so good. Yeah. I, I love the little baby too. And they kind of find out his superpower at the end. And then the next one, the baby was a good one. So yeah, good, good take there. Incredibles. Mr. B. Yeah. Welcome to the space jam. It's your chance to your dance with the space jam. Number four on my list. Space jam. Space jam. Uh, I, space jam took the combination of two of my favorite things basketball and my favorite basketball player is Muggsy Bogues. That guy was five foot three. He's on the movie. Awesome. And cartoons and combine them together to for perfect cartoon magic um also there's a space jam coming out with lebron james it's going to be amazing yeah not okay. much to say about that except i'm jealous of your dance moves and your singing ability so well done lisa on to number three number three is inside out who doesn't love Amy Poehler, okay? It's just great. It lets people know that, you know, you don't always have to be okay and you can work through it. And I just love it. I, I agree with you in some ways. Um, Inside Out is parts of it are top five movie. The first half an hour and the last 10 minutes, but the depressing wandering in the desert land or what underworld they were, that was fall asleep. Thank you, Peter Bay. Um, parts of it great, but no, no, Lisa. Don't. It was very necessary to the storyline. Well, but it was boring to the watcher, the viewer, whatever. Anyway, Peter Bay, on to you three. Number three, you know what? I even played the role of uh, his his cousin without the heart change. I played the role of Wreck-It Randy at VBS a few years ago. My number three movie, Wreck-It Ralph. What I loved about this movie is it took a lot of the arcade game characters from my childhood that were super nostalgic for me and threw them all together in this great comedy. Uh, Wreck-It Ralph was just flat out good stuff. All right. All right. Good take right there. Lisa, who's your number two? My number two is none other than Mulan. You know, she saved her entire country. She did what she had to do. She followed her beliefs. It was just so good. And she was so passionate. At least I see you maybe resonating with that character a little bit. I've never seen it, but maybe I just hear like maybe you, you resonate. Let's right? get down to business. So good. Be uh, a man, must be strong in a something, something. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Mr. Don't lose your voice. Who's your number two? Number two. This is a, a, one of those kind of oddball comedies that uh, I think connected with kids just as well as it connected with adults. I'm talking about that big green Olga Shrek. I love Shrek. The comedy, it, it, I think it just hits for everybody. And it was different, a little bit strange. It had a great mix of some intellectual and just and some potty humor. And then and, and it combined some of those old fairy tales. It was a great conglomeration of joy, Shrek. That's a big word. Uh, can you give us a little bit of that Shrek voice? You got that in your repertoire? Donkey! Donkey! Get back here, donkey! I don't know if he ever said that. He, it sounded really close, though. That's good. I, I could envision you as Shrek, like, playing that character really well. Just, like, voice, the slapstick humor, the, like, lovable giant. You know what I mean? That's what, anyway. Love you, was that a compliment? <laughs> Yes, I know. it came out and I was like, oh, I'm not punching him or anything, am I? But no, a compliment. Anyway, I could see you as a huge, over green, overweight green guy. Uh, let's move beyond that. We'll edit that out. Lisa, number one. <laughs> uh, Peter, you got it. My number one is Shrek. You no, know, it's comedy gold. It's so great. There's a talking donkey. Come on. It's just so fantastic and i could watch it every day and i still quote it to this day you have a quote for us lisa uh what is it uh pick number three my lord pick number three <laughs> <laughs> pick number three my lord gets me every time <laughs> mr b take us home number one yeah number one i'm taking a little bit of a i'm leaving comedy a little bit and this is just one of the most epic animated films of all time. Hi, 
Everybody too. Lion King. <sighs> Lion King, Mufasa. Just like these characters that are, oh my goodness. Lion King was before its time. They took years to uh, um, craft that movie and, and draw the wildlife as perfectly as they could. And it also came out in 1994 when I was like nine years old. And so it was perfect for me. And, and, and I love that movie to this day. They came out with a live action last year, went and saw that. And that was great too. Lion King number one. Uh, let me just clarify. Did you say Lion King number one or one and a half? <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what that one is. I've never, it could be great. Who knows? I've just never seen it. It uh, is. I recommend it. I, I, I don't want to fight you on this one, so I believe it. Uh, here's my list in summary, and then I'll recap you guys. For me, I there were a lot of honorable mentions, but I'll skip that and just put all my energy towards the movie I hate. The Little Mermaid. And there's more behind this than just the movie. Uh, so I have a younger sister who was four when the movie came out. We have one TV in our house and the spoiled brat little sister got to watch Little Mermaid every single stinking day. So I heard Little Mermaid and whatever the witch lady is and the little talking crab guy all the time. So I'm still in counseling right now from these deep childhood wounds, Little Mermaid, uh, under the sea, let's put Little Mermaid under the ground, baby. Gone. Ariel, Ariel, why you look so sad? Where did you go, Lisa? Yeah, Lisa looks so sad. Man, any, any reaction there, Lisa? You want to speak on this one? I just, what? I am honestly devastated and confused. And this really might impact our working relationship, Mike. Okay. Might have to go see the core, get a little counseling appointment over yeah. there. I am yeah, honestly in, in counseling over the PTSD over the Little Mermaid. I need to work through this childhood wound. So let's move on, get to happier places, mm -hmm. get beyond Little Mermaid. Uh, number five for me, mentioned by PDG Bay, Wreck It Ralph. Same reasons he gave. Hilarious, great character, John C. Riley. The video game characters loved it, played all those games. Number four, also mentioned Shrek. Mm. Humor, great, lovable, giant ogre, donkey, parfait scene is awesome. Uh, and now my top three, which were not in either of your top fives or honorable mentions. Ooh. Number three, a game changer in animated movies, Toy Story 1. All of them were great. I'm going with the first one, the original, Woody and Buzz. Uh, just a great idea and concept storyline and very likable and funny. Number two, Mr. B, can you just move over just a little bit? Despicable Me. I can't believe y'all missed that, man. Gru is incredible. Steve Carell plays a great part in that. The minions are so lovable and funny. The criminal then turns good guy, all that kind of stuff. Great conversion story by the gospel of Jesus Christ right there. Number one for me, bringing it home. Also, Despicable Me, the soundtrack was incredible. Number one for me, the Lego movie. Hilarious well done uh the, the drawing of the lego pieces all that kind of stuff i love the will ferrell cameo it was just really really funny the batman one too i'll throw that one in as a bonus uh lisa reactions to my top five are you still stuck in a little mermaid just ridiculous all just right Mike White sure thinks that his list is complete. You're always coming so hard, man. Just always coming. That was cute, man. You have to write me some more bars on that one. Mr. Beanie, reactions to my top five or my hated movie? You know what sticks out here is his top three weren't even chosen by us. That makes me believe that there are um, other movies that we didn't even list today that might be in your top five, maybe even your number one. We want to hear those. So type them in and let us know. Yep. Quick recap on Lisa and Mr. B's top five. Lisa, five, four, three, two, one. Lion King, one and a half. Or is it 1.5? One and a half? One, one and a half. And a half. <laughs> the Incredibles, Inside Out, Mulan, and Shrek. Mr. B went with Aladdin, Space Jam, Wreck-It Ralph, Shrek, and The Lion King to round those out. Comment below. Let us know where we got it right. And, of course, where we got it wrong. Post your top five below. Love you guys. Have a great week. Bye.